You're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and this is our preview of the DSP Leaders Summit on Edgenomics, which looks at the operator economics that support the distributed telco cloud, or telco edge. Joining me is Ray Lemaitre, Editorial Director at Telecom TV and co-host of the summit, as well as being our resident go-to coffee guru. Hello, Ray. We'll get to edgenomics in a moment, but most importantly, what's the bean of the month recommendation? Well, Guy, this, of course, is the hot topic of the moment, of course, and having almost eaten a half kilo raw, I can thoroughly recommend the full roast Tres Rios, a pulse-making dark bean from Costa Rica. And the good news is it doesn't cost a fortuna. See what I did there? And it's all from the Algerian coffee stores and still smells fantastic. <laughs> ah, the high cost of coffee. <laughs> I think we need to. I think we need to designate this as a, a cotardo event. Short but strong. Okay, edgenomics. <laughs> Coming up, we have sessions over three days, and to get the most out of the summit, you need to be a registered user of Telecom TV. So hop on over to telecomtv.com forward slash edgenomics. Simple as that. Once you register, you'll be able to send questions to our panelists, and we really do want to hear from you. So, to day one, Tuesday the 20th of October. New videos are going to be posted throughout the day to watch on demand whenever and however you want. And we have our live Q&A show scheduled for 4.30pm UK time, but more about that later. Ray, what can we look forward to seeing on day one of the Edgenomics Summit? How are we going to kick things off? Well, the summit starts with a discussion about edge investment strategies for telcos featuring speakers from Orange, BT Labs and Etsy. Uh, and the focus here is on what options uh, the operators have, to what extent they need to invest in new or upgraded edge compute assets, what sort of partnership arrangements they might need to make, uh, and the other key considerations that operators need to develop their edge strategies. Uh, what's clear to me, Guy, is that there's still uh, an awful lot of variables uh, and still little in the way of industry consensus, other than the need for relevant partnerships, particularly with the hyperscalers. And after all, we're talking about the development of the distributed cloud here. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right about the number of variables we're seeing here. There is no consensus, is there? There's no agreed best practice strategy. You know, and I do worry about the smaller telcos. You know, if the large tier ones are just about holding their own in working out edge investment strategies and dancing around the global hyperscalers, then what chance do the tier twos and threes have? Indeed. Uh, I mean, it is possible, though, that small operators might find it easier to make a single big decision. Uh, say, you know, outsourcing nearly of their or all of their edge requirements. So, you know, that might come to uh, come into play for them and make it a little bit easier. Who knows? Yeah, it's, it's a good idea. I think we may well see that. Uh, to, we end the day um, with the first of our live Q&A sessions. And as we mentioned, they start at 4.30 p.m. UK time. The sessions during last month's cloud native telco summit proved to be an absolute blast. So uh, don't miss them. We advise you to to tune in and, and participate. Right, day two, Wednesday the 21st of October, we bring in the hyperscalers, but do they have an invite or did they just crash the telco's party? <laughs> Ray, those hyperscalers, they get everywhere and right now they've got their eyes fixed on the telco edge, but are they friend or foe? Well, right now I think we can focus on the friendship uh, angle. Uh, that much came from the discussions uh, between the panelists from Verizon, Microsoft, and our independent contributor from Core Analysis. Uh, but we all have different types of friends, right? And let's not forget, this is business. It's not a social event. So right now, each party has something that the other one wants and needs. And in the short term, at least, that isn't going to change. So, you know, right now, in general, everyone's playing nicely. Uh, but the focus right now is on investment. What happens when the returns on those investments starts to come in? Well, everything's up for grabs. But these are fascinating relationships. Uh, but for me, there's little doubt uh, that there will be domain creep in the coming years from both, both directions, I would say. 
Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Um, you know, it may be that we're seeing something of a, of a honeymoon period here at the moment, and we all know that doesn't last forever. The telcos are betting big that their extensive physical edge coverage and all their pre-existing assets are going to remain valuable here and I guess give them a fair degree of bargaining power with the global DSP hyperscalers. Yep, but uh, well, let's look on the bright side though. These companies may not be monogamous, but they might have lasting and fruitful relationships. And that's a that's a very good sentiment. I think we should we we'll take that. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree with glass that. Glass half full. Uh, and Ray, you glass half full, guys. Yeah, uh, yes. You know what? I'm fed up of being half empty. You know, enough with the half empty glasses. This is Telecom TV. <laughs> We're half full. Uh, Ray, you also conducted an interview with Cellnex on on day two, uh, and and the role of of neutral hosts in edgenomics. Yeah, so this was a, a great conversation I was able to have with Jose Antonio uh, Aranda, who's the Innovation and Product Strategy Director at Cellnex. Uh, he provided a way in which Cellnex plans to play a role in the telco edge sector and how it's been developing its, its options, what kind of services and relationship it, it expects to be hosting and managing and how the overall role of the neutral host might develop in the coming years. Cellnex is a really interesting company to watch, I think. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And it's a sector that we're going to increasingly cover here on the glass half full telecom TV as the telco <laughs> landscape continues to shift. Now, don't forget to register if you want to engage with the panelists and speakers during the live Q&A session, which again is happening at 4.30 p.m. UK time. So to our third and final day, Thursday the 22nd of October, when we investigate two highly topical use cases, the role of the telco edge in 5G and the opportunities at enterprise customer premises. Ray, let's first consider the enterprise and the role of the telco edge. Ah uh, yes, the, the great plains of the enterprise landscape. So much opportunity, so much fertile ground, and yet so easy to take a wrong turn and end up in the barren wilderness. But enough of this caffeine-induced prose. Uh, we already know I'm not going to make a living as a writer, so I need to focus, focus, focus on the job in hand. Um, and so to get back to the actual topic, this is an opportunity uh, that's exciting and freaking out the telcos in equal measure, in my opinion. Um, this discussion involving speakers from China Mobile, HPE, Verizon and VMware certainly lays out the various opportunities to be had as the enterprises seek to make the best use of their enhanced applications, connectivity, insight and control that the modern ICT systems can offer them. Uh, the panel also offered great insight into the advantages that telcos have right now in terms of their relationships with the enterprises, including the physical aspect of having technology deployed on enterprise premises already. But what's interesting here is what the panel thinks is important to secure long-term trusting relationships uh, with enterprise users. And of course, it's really interesting to get the view from the Chinese market too, of course. Uh, and at the end of the day, what we're talking about here uh, is the development of customer relationships that could, in aggregate, make or break service providers because the potential value uh, of this enterprise business is so enormous over the coming years and decades. But of course, that also means that everyone and their dog is going to be trying to get in and win this business too. So the battle on the great plains of the enterprise landscape could just get a little bit bloody. I certainly agree. Uh, it, it's going to get messy, OK? As you say, it's a prize worth fighting for, so there's going to be plenty of contenders in this battle. Um, so much came out of this discussion. There were some terrific insights, but what, one thing that kept getting mentioned was the role of platforms, 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 and the perceived advantages of a telco-delivered platform. Yeah, well, actually, I mean, you know, the future for digital service providers of any kind is platform-oriented. Uh, and it's going to be a sorry time for any company that doesn't go down uh, that route. And the, capab the capabilities to build these platforms are there already. So, you know, the, the, the telcos, the CSPs, they, they just need to focus on this and get on with it. Absolutely right. 
Uh, so to our final panel, uh, which focuses on 5G. Ray, how important is edge computing to the 5G business case? Ah, yes. Well, depending on where you're coming from, uh, edge and 5G go together like coffee and cream or like chips and custard. But I would say don't knock it until you've tried it, of course. Uh, but it's fair to say that this panel featuring speakers from Telefonica, Red Hat, uh, um, uh, ACG Research, Verizon, Dell was leading more towards the coffee and cream side of the menu. There wasn't just a back slapping, everything's going to be great exercise. Uh, I'm glad to say we had some uh, great insights into the bigger picture of 5G beyond uh, just faster mobile broadband and swanky devices uh, and some of the very specific roles that edge computing can play in the evolution of the radio access network. Uh, this was a panel that touched on so many key, top, uh, key topics, uh, from virtualized RAN to cloud native to key considerations related to the developer community. And we even had an obituary for a widely deployed, deployed technology. Now, I'm not going to spoil the plot here, though. You'll have to watch that panel to find out. Uh, but check it out and then get your questions in for the live Q&A. Oh, yes, yes, this is a spoiler-free space. Yep, that panel was dope, <laughs> as the kids apparently say. Uh, and yes, watch the discussion, then send us in your own questions. Um, I'm pretty sure that all of our 5G panellists are due to take part in a Q&A. Uh, and we also discussed whether or not Edge had a role in telco operations as well as 5G service delivery. Yeah, no, absolutely, Edge computing definitely has a role to play there. This is an inwards as well as an outwards facing uh, opportunity. Uh, and there's efficiencies to be had and, and new services to be built, you know, within the, the, the realms of the CSP and the DSP too. Uh, absolutely for sure. Well, as, as, you, as you say, it was a very animated panel, um, well worth watching. We also have an, a keynote interview um, with Neil McRae, Chief Architect at BT. And I expect Neil had plenty to say about the edge. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, BT's chief architect uh, uh, even switched off his uh, pinball tables uh, uh, in his home bunker office so that I wouldn't get distracted by the flashing lights as we, we chatted about BT's edge strategy. Uh, and Mr. McRae, as ever, was great value and provided some really key insights uh, into some of the key decisions that BT has taken and what he thinks are the important considerations in an edge strategy with a very healthy focus of edgenomics, of course. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching that. I never miss a Neil McRae interview. He's good box office. Uh, and we're going to have to get the DSP Leaders Pinball Tournament back up and running, even if it's just online. So there you go. I bet you one dollar I can beat you, Guy. There you go. I've thrown it down, thrown down that gauntlet. <laughs> not, a ch not a chance. I'm rubbish at pinball and everyone knows it. Uh, right. To wrap up the day, and indeed this year's Edgenomics Summit, we have our final Q&A session. One last chance to grill the guests and also help us set the agenda for our ongoing coverage of Edge on Telecom TV. Ray, all set for the summit? Yeah, well, I, I have a small bean mountain to keep my wheels turning and all the ingredients I need to make a Negroni or six. So, yeah, I think I'd say I'm all set. Well... You know, that's all from Ray and me uh, for this preview, other than to say we hope you can join us for the Edgenomics Summit. Thank you so much for joining us today and please do get in touch with us and send in your questions and ideas. We really do want to hear from you. Take a look at the agenda page on the Telecom TV website for all the details and timings of the sessions and don't forget to register. But for now though, thank you for watching and goodbye. Mm -hmm.